Almighty God, our Father, we give thanks to you this afternoon for the Air Force ROTC Battalion at North Carolina State University and for the values that it announces to this university. That our freedoms and a stable world order must always be defended. That military discipline, though unpopular to many, is a noble thing. That all Americans are indebted to the training and commissioning of a few to those ends. Thank you for the families of these cadets, for their previous teachers, coaches, friends, who began shaping them long before they arrived on this campus. Thank you for the wise, steady hands of this cadre and staff who have successfully guided them to their commissioning ceremony. We pray for our Commander-in-Chief for guidance, wisdom, and protection for him and for his entire team. We remind you today of our comrades who are in harm's way, a long way from home. We pray for their safety, for diligence in carrying out their missions, and for your comfort to their loved ones who share in the sacrifice. And we render honor unto you, O oh God, for your involvement in this endeavor, how you must have delighted in the training of these cadets, training in military knowledge and skills, training in physical endurance and teamwork, training in integrity, service, and excellence, qualities which you yourself love. So we do not invite your presence here this afternoon. We acknowledge your presence. We recognize that you have been here every moment these four years, challenging, stretching, motivating, encouraging, and protecting, and then challenging some more. Indeed, molding tender college students into men and women now qualified to serve as officers of the United States Air Force. And so unto you, Almighty God, our eternal Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, unto you this afternoon we render the honor due your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Major Sherry Carr. I'm the Education and Recruiting Officer at Air Force ROTC Detachment 595, and I would like to welcome each of you to the Spring 2021 Commissioning Ceremony. Today we recognize 13 cadets as they prepare to become second lieutenants in the United States Air Force. They have proven themselves as leaders of character and now have the distinct honor of being recognized in front of their family, friends, peers, and mentors who have supported them through this incredible journey. At this time, I would, I would like to introduce the members of our official party as well as our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until each one has been introduced. Our guest speaker, retired Major General Brian M. Killo. The commander of Detachment 595, Professor of Aerospace Studies and presiding officer for today's event, Lieutenant Colonel John J. Dumont III. The Senior Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Lisa P. Zapata. The Vice Chancellor Emeritus for Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Thomas H. Stafford, Jr. We would also like to recognize our Detachment 595 cadre, as well as family and friends of our graduating cadets who are joining us in person as well as via live stream today. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Stafford to come forward to discuss the significance of the Wolfpack Commissionee's ranks. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everybody. I am a very honored to be a part of this important ceremony. I want to congratulate all the cadets who will soon become second lieutenants in the U.S. Air Force. And also, congratulations to your family and friends who are here today to share in this celebration. 
I, I believe there is, gonna, there is a lot of pride and uh, excitement in this room today. This is a very, very special event. Now, a new tradition for Air Force ROTC at NC State that began five years ago continues today. Late yesterday afternoon, cadets to be commissioned gathered at the Alumni Memorial Bell Tower. Within their possession were their gold bars, their second lieutenant rank that will shortly be pinned onto their uniform. After a group photograph, Cadet Casano unlocked the door and we entered the Shrine Room, the most sacred place on the entire campus. The names of the NC State alumni who died during World War I were highlighted on the beautiful plaque. As we remembered those who had gone before, each cadet placed his or her gold bars below the plaque. We departed, locked the door, and your bars spent the night in the shrine room. This morning, we removed your bars. During the night, something very mystical and magical and very, very special happened within the shrine room. As the midnight hour approached, your gold bars felt the presence of a powerful force within the bell tower. The spirit of the Wolfpack Warriors had entered the Shrine Room. This spirit changed your go bars forever. A bond, a connection to all past Wolfpack Warriors was established. The military history and traditions of NC State and the, co the core values of the U.S. Air Force, integrity first, service before self, excellence in all that we do, they were all infused into your bars. NC State's long and very proud history of providing outstanding leaders for our nation's military is now a part of your gold bars. And today, you carry on that proud tradition when you take the oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. The gold bars that you will soon wear may look like the bars worn by all other lieutenants, but they are different, and you know why. Congratulations. I thank you for your commitment and your service, and wish you all the best. Wear your gold bars with Wolfpack pride, and forget not the spirit of the Wolfpack Warriors. Thank you. Thank so thank you very much. So I'm in place at my <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Stafford. It is now my honor to introduce our guest speaker. Major General Brian M. Killo earned a commission from Detachment 595 at NC State in 1987 after graduating with a degree in aerospace engineering. 
During his distinguished career, he served as a weapons systems officer with more than 2,800 flight hours. He has commanded at the squadron and wing level and served in multiple combat operations, including Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and Iraqi Freedom. He also served at Headquarters Pacific Air Forces as Chief of Staff and Deputy Commander. Among his numerous military decorations are the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Legion of Merit, and the Defense Superior Service Medal. He is currently the owner of Kilo Consulting LLC in Forest, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Major General Killo. Wow, it's a full crowd. That's outstanding. Uh, thank you for that introduction. That was perfect. You know, sometimes they get out here and they read. Since, well, when he was two years old, he went to kindergarten. It, it gets, I can do that, sir. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. Thank you. Um, but thanks, seriously, for the introduction, and uh, to Colonel Dumont, to the cadre, to distinguished visitors and, and guests, uh, most importantly, family members in the audience, thank you for being here, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am seriously and genuinely humbled. Uh, cadets and soon-to-be second lieutenants, you won't remember a thing I said. <laughs> Hopefully you'll remember a few things, but I remember being here. Whew, 30, wait a minute, let's do the math here. 34 years and five days ago, uh, I was doing this very ceremony, and, uh, and I do remember it, and I still have the box with my gold bars and, and everything in it. So it's a, it's a great reminder of the, the excellence at NC State and Detachment 595. I have great memories here. Uh, as you heard, um, I was here, graduated in 87, However, I was on the five-year program, so I started in 82, which meant I was here for Jimmy Valvano in the last national championship, which means I'm a long-suffering Wolfpack fan. <laughs> Depending on you guys to continue the tradition by getting us a national championship through your prayers and <laughs> connections. Um, most of all, I remember my Air Force ROTC family here. I didn't pledge a fraternity. I didn't join one of the major clubs. Um, I was part of a family at Air Force ROTC Detachment 595, and I think that's probably true of you as well. So uh, I'm so honored to come back. I've been trying to come back for several years now, and I was always deployed or overseas or something would take, take precedence, but I'm here today, and, and that is uh, just, again, my honor. In my year group, plus or minus a year, uh, we had five general officers, future general officers, so look around you. I guarantee it's the same in your class, okay? So think about that. Think about the connections that you have and the, and the network that you already have going into the Air Force and the Space Force. There will be continued future uh, distinguished service, and I have no doubt of that. You're going to have opportunities to continue the tradition of excellence and bravery and commitment and service that those that went before you have done. You entered the Department of Defense and the Air and Space Force at a critical point in history. I should say that we all enter the Air Force and the Space Force at a critical point in history, but uh, each of us has our unique challenges as we enter. Yours include peer competitors in Russia and China, accelerating technology, forget Moore's Law, we're passing that, aging inventory and infrastructure that you're gonna have to deal with, you have decreasing budgets in real dollars over the next few years, I can guarantee that. You have private enterprise and non-state actors with very real capabilities that you're gonna to have to deal with. I mean, look no further than the pipeline hack this week, right? Those are real capabilities out there. And I could go on, but the bottom line is every generation faces the challenges of upholding our constitution and defending those freedoms and we pass the torch to you now. These are yours. Chief General Brown, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, and my former boss as I retired, recognized this a long time ago. And as he came on as the chief, he gave you this challenge. He gave all of us this challenge, which is accelerate change or lose. Accelerate change or lose. And that challenge is similar to prior generations' challenges, 
So much so that the things that are required to accelerate change or lose are part of your heritage. Flexibility has always been key to air and space power. Innovation has always been key to air and space power. And bold leadership has always been key to air and space power. And so those are the things that you have to attain as you go forward. And you have that potential. So that's the, that's the grandiose, the big picture that I wanted to lay out for you. But I, I really want to speak to the soon-to-be lieutenants here in the crowd. I want to give you a practical way to start developing yourself to have those attributes. And make no mistake, the Air Force is going to train you. They're going to educate you. They're going to put you through a program to get you to certain levels of competence. But that's not enough. You have to want it, and you have to take ownership of it going forward. So here are a few thoughts on practical actions for you to take and pursue going forward. I would say, look, take out your Palm Pilot and start writing on your hand. But you're so young that you don't even know what a Palm Pilot was. So I'm going to say, you take out your iPad and write on your hand. Anyway, first, be the expert. You might be the expert in the hydraulic system. You might be the expert in the deployment process. You could be the expert in the planning system. Or maybe you're the snacko. Now, some of you don't know what SNACO is. SNACO generally going into a squadron is the youngest lieutenant in the squadron, and they're responsible for making sure that the squadron heritage room, used to be called a bar, is stocked, okay, that it's kept up and that the squadron fund is managed well. And don't laugh because many a lieutenant's career has been made or broken by how well they performed as a SNACO, and I'm not kidding. I could give you examples. Okay, so be the expert wherever you're at. Be a team player. You have competed against your fellow cadets. I have no doubt about it. Some of it probably in good nature, some of it maybe not such good nature. You're going to continue to compete, but you have to be part of a team because it's more important that the team succeeds than that you succeed. And the fewer people that care who gets the credit, the better the team is going to be. And so be a team player. I could have learned that a lot earlier. Have a great attitude and be humble. Take your calling and your service seriously. Don't take yourself seriously. Take your calling and your service seriously. At the same time, don't demean yourself. I'm not asking you to do that. You should be very proud of what you're doing. With a few rare exceptions, do not turn down training or education. I had a great chief master sergeant. We would go talk to the first term airmen when I was a wing commander. First term airmen come out of basic training and they go to a a course to, to help ease them into the, the new location at the first term airman center and so they get the opportunity for the wing commander and one of the senior NCOs to come in and speak to them several times and so this chief master sergeant she would go in and she would say your opportunities and your future is just like this it's this wide and when you make decisions or mistakes sometimes you close the aperture and the next time you make a decision, sometimes you can close the aperture. And soon you're left only with one path to take. Or sometimes there's no path available to you anymore, depending on the seriousness of your decisions and your, your uh, mistakes. So training and education helps you keep that aperture wide open. OK? So going forward. Make sure you strive for balance in your development. And I lumped that into four categories that I just shamelessly stole from the Army. Physical, mental, social, spiritual. It's like four legs of a stool, okay? So let's hit those real quick. Mental. It's important to keep developing your mind. Your study in NC State is not the end of your academic career, nor should it be your personal, uh, into your personal development. So have a reading list, both personal and professional. So I don't care if you like to read Grisham novels or crime detective series or, or the latest romance novel. I, I don't care. Your mind needs some time off. Have a personal set that you want to read. But have a professional set, too, whether that's Lincoln on Leadership or Team of Teams or something from Simon Sinek. Start with why. Uh, all great books. Second, physical. Don't give up on your physical fitness training, okay? You're going to be, you're going to be uh, tempted to put yourself into the job, to have fun with your friends, and let that PT go. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
you should always try to strive to be able to pass the PT test for the youngest member of your squadron. And if you can do that, you'll maintain the standards you need to maintain. And get into team sports, if at all possible. There's few things that build cohesion in a unit better than playing team sports together, so I recommend that you do that. Social, develop the people skills that accentuate leadership. And I'm not telling you have a party every weekend so that you can use your friends as, you know, guinea pigs, but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Work on speaking and organizing and negotiating. Those are all people skills that are really important in being able to do your job, especially as you start dealing with other cultures and other militaries. Finally, spiritual. Search for your why, okay? I have mine. I know what my spiritual journey is. I'd be happy to share it in private, but you have to find yours. Remember that your unit chaplain is chaplain to everyone. He may only be pastor or rabbi or leader or imam to a few in your squadron, but he's chaplain to all, and he can get you started if you have a question. All four of these things are like four legs of a table. If you neglect them too long, one of them's going to get unbalanced, and you're going to fall over. So I recommend it. Try to also achieve a good work-life balance. Singularly focused people tend to burn out or they get over-specialized and hit a ceiling. So don't, don't singularly devote yourself to your work. You gotta get some life balance as well. Your mind, body, and soul need, out, need outlets as well as work. Uh, I'm gonna pause here because I wanna get your attention because those of you that have been nodding off Find a good senior NCO. Find a good senior NCO. When you get to your first duty station, maybe your unit doesn't have an NCO. Could happen. Go find one in another unit. Find one and be humble and ask them to mentor you. Find out what makes the backbone of our force. Find out what they do and what makes them special, okay? They will teach you more than any schoolhouse will, I guarantee it. If you have questions, ask your first sergeant or maybe your uh, senior enlisted advisor or your flight commander probably could point out a good, a good mentor. Recognize the unseen. There are unseen around us all the time, whether they're the custodian, the administrative assistant in the boss's office, the lady that runs the coffee shack, or the man that runs the food truck. Know their names. Get to know them, know who their families are. You'll learn far more about your unit than you, than you think. And I guarantee you, each of them probably has something that can help you along the way. Volunteer in the community. Less than 2% of the American public serves in the military. That means you may be the only person they know on active duty. And if you're out there serving, they're gonna see the quality and excellence that you exhibit you're also gonna meet some outstanding people that will humble you in the way they give back to their community. It's a real inspiration. I talked to the group yesterday at lunch. There are no bad assignments. There are only assignments where you fail to take advantage of the things that are there. So it's 80% attitude and 20% effort. So I don't care if you're a warm weather, warm blooded guy that hates it when it gets below 60 and you get assigned to Minot. I guarantee that can be a great assignment, but you gotta have the right attitude about it. Finally, make it worth it for your family. You signed up for this. You are doing what you are paid to do, what you love to do, what you signed up to do, and nobody asked them what they wanted to do. And the Department of Defense sure isn't going to ask them before they give you orders to the next post. And so make it worth it. Help them find the opportunities at those new locations. Help them get prepared for those moves. Help them to understand why it's important that they're the ones that sacrifice, not you. And that we understand that they're the ones that are really holding up the backbone. There you have it. Nuggets cleaned over 32 plus years. I could talk longer. I won't. I promised. I'm so excited for you, for you second lieutenants as you get that first promotion today from cadet to lieutenant. I thank you for the families. These, these cadets didn't get here without your support and love. 
and we in the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Space Force can't thank you enough for your sacrifices. For those of you going in onto active duty now, I would trade places with you today, as long as I get your body and my paycheck. <laughs> You have a bright future, and I'm so excited to watch and see you soar. Thank you again. God bless you. Thanks to DET 595, the U.S. Air Force, the Space Force, our great nation, and you. Thanks again. And let me point out that Hannah Fletcher was the best POC I've ever had for any event so you can put that into her training record. She, she took care of me, made sure that I got to the right places. I didn't get lost. I'm an old guy, you know, I had to use my phone to get around. She was, she was there to help me if I needed it. So great job, Hannah. Well, thank you so much, sir. We greatly appreciate the lunch yesterday. We gained so many words of wisdom. We got a second repeat on a lot today, which is great, because, I mean, college students, we have to hear things sometimes twice. And so thank you so much. Um, this is a token of appreciation with some NC State awesome. swag. swag. So, Hopefully you have a safe flight home, and thank you so much. We hope to continue having a long relation with you as you continue to enjoy retirement. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so sir, much. so much. Thank you, General Kilo. Please give Major General Kilo one more round of applause for that <laughs> great words of wisdom. And now we find ourselves at the moment you have waited for. It is time to officially swear in our commissionees. During this portion of the ceremony, each cadet will take the oath of office, which will be administered by a commissioned officer of their choosing. Pay close attention to the words being stated in the oath, which can be found inside your program. It is fundamentally the same oath every officer in all branches of service of the military has taken since our country was established over 240 years ago. All officers share a common bond. They all have sworn allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the principles it espouses. The oath, along with the bond and commitment that it embodies, will forever connect these patriots, whether airmen or guardian, with American heroes, past, present, and future. Upon taking the oath, the new commissionee will be awarded a certificate of commissioning by which the President of the United States appoints him or her a second lieutenant indicating special trust and confidence in his or her patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities. Following the oath, you will witness two additional brief ceremonies. First, family members of our newly commissioned lieutenant will join him or her on stage to pin on their second lieutenant ranks. The second ceremony is the time-honored tradition of the first salute. A silver dollar is given to the first enlisted military member who salutes a newly commissioned officer. The exact origin of this custom is still debated. Researchers suggest that it came from the British regiments that were stationed in colonial America. An enlisted soldier was assigned to train each newly commissioned British officer to teach them the unit's history and traditions and to ensure that their equipment and expertise met appropriate standards. Officers often showed their heartfelt gratitude by informally compensating the enlisted person with a small sum of money which is believed to have later evolved into this tradition. This practice is an expression of respect from one professional to another, a thank you for acts both done and yet to come. Our new second lieutenants have selected someone for this ceremony who has helped them in a similar fashion along the way. Commissionees, without further ado, please come forward when I call your name. Cadet James P. Biondi, please come forward with U.S. Army Reserve First Lieutenant John Biondi, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Biondi is graduating with a Bachelor Degree of Science in Computer Science. He will commission as a remotely piloted aircraft pilot trainee and will be stationed at Creech Air Force Base, Nevada. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, James Philip Biondi, having been appointed a second lieutenant, 
having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force, in the United States Air Force, I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Lieutenant, excuse me, Biondi's ranks will now be pinned on by his mother, Lisa Biondi, his father, Gino Biondi, and his sister, Mandy Biondi. Please join him on stage. Second Lieutenant James P. Biondi, United States. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Biondi's first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Devin Gathers. Please join him on stage. sharing it with the other commissionees. I'm proud to be here with you guys, so thank you. Cadet Matthew L. Bloodworth, please come forward with Air Force Second Lieutenant Jason Brown, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Bloodworth is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. He will commission as a pilot trainee and will be stationed at Shepard Air Force Base, Texas. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. I, Matthew Lee Bloodworth. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. In the United States Air Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. 
and I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully, discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duties of the office, upon which I am about to enter, upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Bloodworth's ranks will now be pinned on by his mother, Kat McElvain, his brother, Nathan McElvain, and his father, Air Force Master Sergeant Ben McElvain. Please join him on stage. Second Lieutenant Matthew L. Bloodworth, United States Air Force. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Bloodworth's first salute will be rendered by Master Sergeant Ben McElvain. got a lot of stage time but I'll try to be quick. <laughs> so first of all I just want to thank my mom, the best mom I could ever ask for. Uh, all her unconditional support. I'd like to thank my dad. He allowed me to be creative and weird and gave me the courage to be the person I wanted to be. And lastly I want to thank First Sergeant Harris for being a great mentor in high school and sending me down the right path. Christopher R. Duffy, please come forward with Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Duffy, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Duffy is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Engineering. He will commission as a remotely piloted aircraft pilot trainee and will be stationed at Creech Air Force Base, Nevada. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. I, Christopher Robert Duffy. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That I will well and diligently. That I will well and faithfully. Well and faithfully. 
Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Duffy's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, U.S. Army Retired Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Duffy, and his mother, Christine Duffy, and his sister, Kelsey Duffy. Please join him on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2nd Lieutenant Christopher R. Duffy, United States Air Force. <laughs> 2nd Lieutenant Duffy's first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Gathers. Please join him on stage. Um, but I'm especially excited for my fellow commissionees. I can't wait to see what we have to offer the Air Force and serve with you guys. Thank you. Cadet Stephen S. Elliott II, please come forward with Air Force Second Lieutenant Jason Brown, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Elliott is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering. He will commission as a Developmental Engineer Officer and will be stationed at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. I, Stephen Sager Elliott II. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. In the United States Air Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter upon which I am about to enter so help me God so help me God Second Lieutenant Elliot's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Stephen Elliot, his mother, Cheryl Elliot, and his sister, Emily Elliot. Please join him on stage.
そうSo first off, uh, I got to thank all my family for always being there, always supporting me. They were only an hour and a half away, but they came to visit and they gave a lot of support. And then all my friends and especially roommates, whether they be at their real life jobs or here, they had to listen to me complain about, gosh, we had to wake up the fourth time at 5 a.m. this week? What is going on? So I thank you for listening to five straight years of me having to do with that. And then finally, all of our fellow commissionees for being with me through all those nice early mornings and everything we've done. And I can't wait to see what we're all going to do in the Air Force. Thank you. Cadet Hannah E. Fletcher, please come forward with retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Jim Thomas, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Fletcher is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Studies. She will commission as a pilot trainee and will be stationed at Columbus Air Force Base, Mississippi. Good afternoon, Lady Rand. I state your full name. I, Hannah Elizabeth Fletcher. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith and allegiance. That I bear true faith and allegiance same. to the same. That I take these obligations freely. That I take this obligation freely. And without mental reservation without or any purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the office of the duty or duties of the office. Will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. That I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Okay. Smile at that. Thanks, guys. Second Lieutenant Fletcher's ranks will now be put on by her father, Jim Fletcher, her mother, Jean Fletcher, and her boyfriend, First Lieutenant Christopher Hickson. Please join her on stage.
me for 12 years and uh, put up with that for a long time. I would not be here where I am without her today. Um, my dad, all of my family, my boyfriend who uh, they say recruited me to ROTC. I, I had I had thought about joining ROTC a couple of times but I showed up junior year uh, walking on and said I'll try this for six weeks. Uh, be happy that I tried it and decide this wasn't for me and didn't work out too well I'm still here. Uh, so I just want to give a huge thank you to everybody. I especially want to give another thank you to Major Marion who worked with me so much last fall when I was the wing commander. Um, gave me a lot of great mentoring and I hope to stay in touch uh, as I continue to move through the Air Force. So thank you very much. Cadet Blake J. Goodman, please come forward with Air Force Captain Andrew Munoz, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Goodman is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. He will commission as a remotely piloted aircraft pilot trainee and will be stationed at Creech Air Force Base, Nevada. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Blake John Goodman. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. In the United States Air Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support and defend the Constitution to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and allegiance to the same that I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter upon which I'm about to enter so help me God so help me God Second Lieutenant Goodman's ranks will now be pinned on by his mother Chantel Goodman his father David Goodman and his girlfriend Aaliyah Hunsinger Please join him on stage.
ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Second Lieutenant Blake J. Goodman, United States Air Force. Second Lieutenant Goodman's first salute will now be rendered by Army Specialist Jake Ames. Please join him on stage. say is that as all of the uh, new lieutenants and cadets know and all of us know that nothing is achieved alone uh, this isn't really as much my accomplishment as it is the culmination of everybody who supported me whether that be friends family cadre or mentors so thank all of you especially my peers sitting right here thank all of you for your help and support along the way really really proud to be up here with you guys Cadet Jamil A. Licorice, please come forward with retired Army Colonel Samuel Licorice Jr., who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Licorice is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Communications. She will commission as a Public Affairs Officer and will be stationed at Joint Base Andrews, Maryland. Raise your right hand. When I say I, I want you to repeat after me. I. I, Jamil A. Licorice. Appointed a second lieutenant. Appointed a second in the United States Air Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support and defend. To support and defend. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. To bear true faith. To bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. I will take this obligation freely. I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. I will well. I will well. And faithfully. And faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Licorice's ranks will now be pinned on by her mother, Anita Licorice, her brother, Samuel Licorice III, and her girlfriend, Rayvon Dawson. Please join her on the stage. Retired Army Master Sergeant Roberta Dawson. 
Please join her on stage. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is actually very overwhelming. Um, I want to first thank Cadet Cassiano for putting all of this together. He did outstanding, amazing. Um, and my family, friends, you have supported me since day one. Um, my dad's kind of the main reason that I'm here today. If you would have asked me like six, five years ago if I was going to be in the military, I would have laughed, snapped my, slapped my knee, and probably <laughs> shed a tear uh, from laughing. Um, and then my family kind of dealing with any kind of ROTC lingo that they've never heard of before. Like, I'm a POC going to PT, got the QFR going on. So I appreciate that just sticking with me. Um, and to my extended family of uh, Dead 595 and Cadre and uh, just the commissionees and who, everyone who's not here um, today and virtually, uh, thank you for staying by me and guiding me, um, that's really it, and giving me this opportunity. So. Cadet Matthew F. McClintock, please come forward with Air Force Major Marin, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet McClintock is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering. He will commission as a remote pilot, piloted aircraft trainee and will be stationed at Creech Air Force Base, Nevada. All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. I, Matthew Frederick McClintock, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant McClintock's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Fred McClintock, his mother, Renee McClintock, and his girlfriend, Danielle Syrup. Please join him on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Second Lieutenant Matthew F. Second Lieutenant 
Lieutenant McClintock's first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Natalie Aguilera. Please join him on stage. First off, I'd just like to say thank you to my family. Um, like that Fletcher, my mom homeschooled me for all the way, so I'd like to thank her for that and my parents as well, just uh, for being awesome, for always being there and supporting me. And then um, I'd like to thank fellow commissionees, obviously. Um, it's an awesome day, awesome day to be here, and you guys are awesome, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do. So thank you. Cadet Andrew S. Merrill, please come forward with Air Force Major Marin, who will administer the oath of office. Major Kathleen Merrill. <laughs> <laughs> Cadet Merrill is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. He will commission as an Operations Research Analyst Officer and will be stationed at Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. I, Andrew Scott Merrill, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all en enemies, foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will... That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Lieutenant Merrill's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Tim Merrill, his mother, Susan Merrill, and his brother, John Merrill. Please join him on stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Second Lieutenant Andrew S. Merrill, United States Air Force. Second Lieutenant Merrill's first salute will be rendered by his grandfather, retired, retired Navy Petty Officer, Second Class Jesse Merrill. Please join him on stage.
Well, uh, I'll make this quick. Only 800 words completely memorized. Uh, so first of all, I want to thank my grandparents that are here today. Uh, Nani, Papa, Grandma. Um, I would not be the man that I am today without each of you, uh, figuratively and biologically, of course. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, my dad, uh, Tim, who you saw. He taught me how to play golf, which I read somewhere on the internet is the only essential skill to being a great Air Force officer. <laughs> now, now, Major General Kello, thank you for sharing some other ones. I'll take those with you as well. <laughs> um, I want to thank my mom, who's a dietitian, so I owe at least a few uh, passing FA scores to her. Thanks, Mom. And the, uh, the toughest one, my brother, my older brother, uh, took me a while to think of this one, but he was kind of like growing up with a field training CTA that I had to share that <laughs> with. Uh, he might not understand that one, but everyone up here does. <laughs> 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 And my Aunt Joan, last but not least, who taught me how to swear like a military man. Thank you. <laughs> Cadet Tucker R. Penny, please come forward with Air Force Second Lieutenant Brown, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Penny is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Meteorology. He will commission as a weather officer and will be stationed at davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Tucker Ryan Penny. <laughs> Having been appointed a second lieutenant. Having been appointed a second lieutenant. In the United States Air Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, against, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Penny's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Gary Penny, his mother, Lisa Penny, and his sister, Claudia Penny. Please join him on stage. present to you Second Lieutenant Tucker R. Penny, United States Air Force. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Penny's first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Gathers. Please join him on stage. Lieutenant Merrill's speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, as many people said, I'd like to thank my family and friends, especially the ones that came out here. I could not have done this journey without you. 
Uh, also, echoing Lieutenant Licorice, thank you, Cassiano, for organizing this amazing event. It was really spectacular so far. Uh, <laughs> knock on wood, knock on wood. And also, I'd like to thank the true family in front of me, all the people who have done this journey with me so far. Really, you guys aren't a group of friends. You're my true family out here, and I couldn't imagine a single day without you guys Be by my side. And hope to see you down the road. So, good luck to the rest of you guys. Cadet Jacob B. Stewart, please come forward with Air Force Major Catherine Marin, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Stewart is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Program Management. He will commission as a Combat Systems Officer trainee and will be stationed at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. I, Jacob Blake Stewart, having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that I take this obligation freely without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Stewart's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Michael Stewart, his mother, Rachel Uhas, and grandmother, Marcia Stewart. Please join him on stage. So close. So close. present to you 2nd Lieutenant Jacob B. Stewart, United States Air Force. Second Lieutenant Stewart's first salute will be rendered by Army Sergeant Chris Heath. Please join him on stage. I'd like to first thank the cadre for everything that you taught us and all the wisdom you passed down to me especially. Thank you so much. Shout out to everybody, all my friends and family on the live stream that couldn't be here right now but are here virtually. And I'd like to lastly thank my family, mom, dad, granny, Nama, John, Chris, and Emma. <clears throat> thank you. Cadet Jacob A. Weinberg, please come forward with 2nd Lieutenant Lynch, who will administer the oath of office. 
<laughs> Cadet Weinberg is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Nuclear Engineering. He will commission as a Nuclear Engineer Officer and will be stationed at Patrick Space Force Base, Florida. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. I, Jacob Andrew Weinberg. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of, of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Second Lieutenant Weinberg's ranks will now be pinned on by his mother, Jill Weinberg, his father, Stephen Weinberg, and his brother, Samuel Weinberg. Please join him on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2nd Lieutenant Jacob A. Weinberg, United States Air Force. <laughs> 2nd Lieutenant Weinberg's first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Gathers. Please join him on stage. extended periods of time. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I joined Air Force ROTC and now the Air Force is because of my grandfather. Uh, during Vietnam, he served with an assignment called AFTAC, deals with nuclear security. So it's kind of full circle. Very soon I'm going to be doing the exact same thing as he did. Um, to friends, family, cadre, I definitely did not make this journey easy, especially this past semester. Uh, my mom, dad, Sam, my girlfriend, Abby, Evan, and my Uncle Steve, around Pop Pop, everyone else who's watching. Shout out to you two uh, for making this happen. But um, no, it's just 
truly blessed and honored to be here with you all. I'm excited to take these next steps. Who knows what will happen, but I'm sure many years down the line we'll all see each other again. Cadet Ryan D. Wins, please come forward with United States Coast Guard retired Captain Werner Wins, who will administer the oath of office. Cadet Wins is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering. He will commission as a Developmental Engineer Officer and will be stationed at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Second Lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a Second Lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations. Without any mental better reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to partake upon which I am about to enter so let me go ahead. Second Lieutenant Wins's ranks will now be pinned on by his father, Captain Wins, his mother, Mary Lee Wins, and his sister, Robin Wins. Please join him on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2nd Lieutenant Ryan D. Wins, Wins United States Air Force. <laughs> 2nd Lieutenant Wins' first salute will be rendered by Technical Sergeant Gathers. Please join him on stage. Congrats to all the commissionees. Uh, we made it through the world's longest job interview. Uh, I know for some of us, it was three years. For me, I was kind of on the upper end, five years. Uh, but now we're at the starting line, um, and I'm really excited to see where all of you guys go uh, in the Air Force. Um, to everyone else here, uh, it, sincerely, thank you for coming. Um, all of you, with your support, uh, we couldn't be here, any of us, without uh, any of you who are here in person and virtually. And of course, a special thank you to my family who have always been super supportive uh, in everything I did. So, thank you.
this time, I would like to invite Lieutenant Colonel DeMont and the new commissionees to come forward for the Airman's Coin Ceremony. During World War II, an American lieutenant was shot down behind enemy lines and fell into the hands of the French resistance. The resistance feared him to be a spy and sentenced him to execution. From his pocket, the airman revealed a bronze medallion with his squadron's flying emblem. This confirmed he was an American pilot and saved his life. Today, after completing basic or officer training, all airmen, enlisted and officer, earn an airman's Airman's Coin, marking the end of their time as a trainee. Lieutenant Colonel Dumont presents the commissionees with their Airman's Coins to be carried with them always, bearing witness to their identity as an American Airman. The second lieutenant standing before you, now officers in the world's greatest Air Force, epitomize our core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Though their absence will be felt, they have set an example of dedicated and selfless leadership for the cadets of Detachment 595 to follow. The Department of the Air Force and the United States have gained 13 great officers. On behalf of the staff, cadre, and cadets of Air Force ROTC Detachment 595, we wish each of you the best. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our second lieutenants one final round of applause. <laughs> Seated. Lieutenant Colonel DeMont, the floor is yours. So what you're seeing here is pretty much 13 of the best people in the country. And uh, it's our honor as cadre to be able to go through and spend the time with you. You guys are the ones we got to spend the most time with. First semester we were here, you know, we got a few months, we barely knew their names before we were able to commission them. You guys were looking at three years, we got to kind of spend and see you grow and everything else. So. All of those late nights, all of the paperwork, all of the issues coming from headquarters last second. Uh, today is the day for us that this is why we do it and why it's worth it. We're going to see you go out and do incredible things over the next, hopefully, 20, 25 years, maybe four. But <laughs> hopefully at least four. But for some of you, um, in, in this group, I guarantee you there is a general or two. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, your parents just gave us an incredible product where you just had to kind of tweak you left and right, teach you a little bit about the military. But you came to us with the character integrity. Uh, every one of you, as I was going down the line, I was just thinking about stories about the Ruck March over at Patriot Games and a tug of war and just watching everything, and, you know, trying to get you to the Air Force Academy for a semester and just all the things and late night calls and three different jobs in two days, I mean, <laughs> hockey talks and finishing first in your class at NC State. I mean, it's amazing. And so 
it's definitely our honor and pleasure. I hope some of you get, get to come back to uh, teach one day and do the A pass or the pass. It is the greatest job on earth. It is the way you can make the positive change. So I appreciate it. I'm gonna have you guys file down for just a minute, and then I have two more things I need to say. So you guys can slit or go and go that way. So while they're kind of shuffling off, I want to thank a few people. So General Kellogg, thank you so much. The luncheon yesterday, the true mentorship that I saw, um, that's the part I'm gonna miss in the Air Force. Um, the family and all that stuff. Uh, Dr. Zapata, thank you for everything over the last three years, getting to work with you. Thank you again for providing this live stream. Uh, without DASA, it wouldn't be possible for all the other family members to be able to see this. I think about just a year ago, we couldn't do this. It was all virtual. Um, and we would have never been in a room together. And I think about just the last one we did, we kind of had a hybrid of the two, and we were kind of able to you know, have someone stand there, and their families were outside. And at least this year, we're able to have you get pinned on and be here with your families. And uh, that makes me feel good, because a year ago, we discussed how and kind of horrible we felt that we're doing it virtually and you'd put in four or five years. So I'm glad we're at where we're at now. And if I remember right, I only have one last thing left. Would that probably be true? So I have said this, I think, for each commissioning, but there's a you know, top 10% of ROTC graduates uh, at the detachment um, get distinguished graduate. It stays on your record. It's permanent and goes pretty much forever um, on your record. So uh, we have a distinguished graduate extremely proud of, but I don't want that to take away from how proud I am of everyone because I've said this over and over, my top seven or eight in their class, I'll put in any other detachment and they will be DG. We have such high quality here, it's pretty hard to be the best of the best of the best. So uh, even though I'm gonna proudly award our DG this year, understand that in our, this class, uh, you guys blow me away. Uh, you're 10 times better than for sure I'll ever be. You're gonna be better leaders. Um, better pilots, better officers, better PA, and all that. So I'm proud of all of you, but I would like to present our distinguished graduate, if I could have Cadet Blake Goodman, head on up. personally to get at Goodman, um, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> get him an Uber soon, so. All right. That's it. Two. <laughs> Lieutenant Goodman, so. Although we haven't sent the paperwork yet, we're probably going to wear the claws on that one. So, from me to you, uh, we've had some late night discussions, um, a lot of different things going on. Uh, your character came out over the last couple years, you definitely could have went left or right on me, and I'm proud of you how Good you did. So it's from me to you. Uh, this is my Bagram coin. Probably one of the rougher times in my life. So I wanted to pass it on to you. I have to bring it right home. So as I was saying, we get 10%, but in true NC State fashion, we don't uh, ever hit the minimum. So we were able to pull another distinguished graduate uh, out of region. Uh, which we were very proud of. Um, it was a tough competition. They, they saw the right thing, and uh, we were able to get one more. And our uh, second distinguished graduate, and this is no order, by the way. There was no first and second on this, but uh, was Lieutenant Fletcher. So Woo! So 
basically is wrapping up our ceremony. Um, I hope that you guys get out of it. This is your day. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You put in four or five, some of you longer, years of work. Uh, I'm glad that you realize you just now hit the start line. There's no finish. Um, you're just getting there, and I can't wait to hear and see what's going to happen over the next four to 20 years with uh, most of you. Uh, one of the last notes, so we'll be done. It's the last time you get to uh, see Major Marin and myself. Sergeant Gathers, you have one more. You have one more, only two. So we're turning it over. In case you haven't uh, got to meet it yet, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Captain Johnson, the newest one to our cadre. She's now going to be the continuity uh, with Major Carr. We're turning it over. Uh, Colonel Jordan will be here soon, so this is kind of our farewell. Uh, we couldn't be prouder, happier. Uh, we have lots of food that should be all set up in the back and drink. Um, so once we're done, Please partake, please enjoy. Hats off to you, get at Costigan Rivera. This was a phenomenal uh, ceremony, and uh, I appreciate all that hard work because I know what it took. Um, and that is all I have. I appreciate it, and I'll let you close out your ceremony. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Dumont. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude our spring 2021 Air Force ROTC commissioning ceremony, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the cadre and cadets of Detachment 595 who worked hard to make this significant event a success. Great job and thank you. And thank you to our guests for attending this commissioning ceremony to recognize this momentous occasion. And if you'll humor me for a moment, Lieutenant Colonel Dumont and Major Marin, would you just stand for a moment and face the commissionees? I would be remiss if we did not acknowledge two things before closing. First, the three years of commitment and dedication, and yes, lots of stress, sweat, and tears that these two officers must have put into Detachment 595. Your impact on the cadets in this detachment will be remembered for years to come. Which brings me to the second acknowledgement, which Lieutenant Colonel Dumont already pointed out, that this is their final class of commissionees for these two officers. Please join me in a round of applause for both of them. Again, thank you for everything you have. At the conclusion of the ceremony, family and friends are welcome to come forward to take additional photos. Before we conclude, our new lieutenants will lead us in singing the Air Force song. The words of the first verse of the Air Force song can be found in the back cover of your pro program. Please stand for the singing of the Air Force song and remain standing for the departure of the official party.